followed by complaints about the pace of modern life, but hardly anybody ever does anything about it. I mean, despite our protestations that we want to get away from it all, we often end up in vacation spots that are just about as frantic as the daily lives we're escaping. To get a really different vacation, you have to go to a place that's from another time. No place can entirely fill that bill, of course, but Jack Adams has been to a spot in upstate New York that comes fairly close. three times. Chautauqua, 1995, is begun. With just three taps of a gavel, a whole community comes alive. A village that is completely different for each of the 7,500 people who passes through its gates each summer. Thanks for waiting. Check out who's going to be at the amp today. Through five generations, Jean Bridges' family has been coming to Chautauqua. Every year, I go home with little golden nuggets that I pick up that I'm not even aware of at the lectures, at the symphonies. We're going to Chautauqua and stay there for a week. It's play and hear Amelia ear high speed. For the second year in a row, public radio's Garrison Keeler launched Chautauqua's jam-packed nine-week summer schedule with a live broadcast of his Prairie Home Companion. Founded Chautauqua, which means in the Algonquin tongue, a place where we will sit by ourselves, and when you are ready to join us, you would be welcome. For all his kidding, Keeler identifies with Chautauqua. It's a place where people uh, uh, attend opera and uh, theater, and it's a normal part of everyday life. Why does America need that? America needs a place that isn't like the rest of America. America needs uh, eccentricity. We need uh, a few uh, almonds in the rice pudding, and uh, this is one of the almonds. Set on a lake in western New York, Chautauqua was founded by a group of Methodists 122 years ago as a summer camp for training Sunday school teachers. True to that tradition, alcohol still cannot be purchased here. Cars and TV are discouraged. Chautauqua's early focus on adult education and the performing arts took the nation by storm. By 1890, some 200 tent Chautauquas had sprung up throughout the Midwest, and the original became a magnet for artists and politicians. Teddy Roosevelt called Chautauqua typically American, in that it is typical of America at its best. The main building was built in, in 1881, and uh, Back Edison uh, created the wiring for the uh, Antonium. Oh. There are lots of stories about those kind of things happening. So, yeah, Amelia Earhart landed her plane out here in the Gulf Course. And, you know, uh, President Ford was here, uh, Garfield, Grant, Hayes, Herbert Hoover, McKinley, both FDR and Teddy Roosevelt, and uh, Taft. What's happening now in American society is a real rush towards learning vacations, to use leisure time in a way that you stimulate yourself at the same time. President Daniel Bratton believes the continued emphasis on adult education is the key to Chautauqua's future. What began to intrigue me as I got into this story is why does a company like Ford Motor turn around economically a decade before General Motors fully understands the nature of the problem that it faces? Why? This summer, journalist and author Hedrick Smith is Chautauqua's scholar-in-residence. What was the key to getting people to accept the idea that kids could perform better? 
the mind ready to take on some big issues when it when you're in a very comfortable relaxing setting and i think lots of people don't get that opportunity in our daily lives where we feel the pressure we feel everything's pell-mell not everyone has been entranced by chautauqua William James, the noted Harvard psychologist, lamented, Chautauqua was a middle-class paradise, without sin, without a blot, without a tear. And that, he concluded, was a problem. It is pretty vanilla. There are not many inner-city people here. There are not many people of color here. Uh, and it seems to me it would be much more dynamic and important and vital if there were a larger number of people here. The traditions exist only as they are lived. Chautauqua president Daniel Bratton. There is a selectivity about the place. It's a selectivity that the nature of the experience provides. There's almost an intellectual elitism about the place. I mean, if, if, you're, not, if you're not amongst the intellectually curious, you're going to go nuts here. That focus on the individual is especially strong at Chautauqua's art schools, where students come not to relax, but to work. concerto in F in this practice hut. And at the ballet school, the work goes on from nine in the morning till seven each night. It's really different than most of the other programs because it's very small and they really like work with you here and you get to perform. It requires something different when you perform. Young dancers like 16-year-old Samantha Basford faced fierce competition to win one of the coveted spots. Head here, so you switch from one side to the other. Leave your Former New York City Ballet Company stars Patricia McBride and her husband Jean-Pierre Bonfou are the lures. I'm offering them great human beings who are going to appreciate their talents, who are going to trust them, believe in them, and really make them grow. You see, that's what's really important. So that's what we can offer. What Chautauqua also offers is time, quiet time. Some use it to read a book. Some to make waves. Some to find a safe place for their children. Mark Fultz first came to Chautauqua as a music student almost 20 years ago. A month here is now the centerpiece of his family's summer. Chautauqua's industry seems to stay the same every year, but when you get here, it's always different. You never know what's around the corner. We're going to Chautauqua. And stay there for a week. Very late. See how it's play and hear Amelia Earhart speak. And an illuminated lecture on Tom Paine, window on the past. And they say later in the theater, there'll be a radio broadcast. 